In this video, we'll create a new Angular project which has routing enabled in it. Now, what do I mean by routing enabled? Routing is one of the sub libraries of Angular. Uh, you can choose to use it or you can choose not to use it. If you don't use routing, the functionality of the framework doesn't get included in your build. So it kind of saves some space and uh, the amount of code that you send to, our, to your users. So if you enable routing, uh, the Angular CLI project will have those libraries included. And you also have some hooks to the framework in order to configure your routing. So in order to enable routing, you can actually pass in an argument to your Angular CLI when you're creating a new project and you ask it to set up the routing bare bone uh, configuration. So just like Angular CLI sets up your bare bones uh, application with a simple component, you can also tell Angular CLI to set up a bare bones routing configuration and it kind of sets a placeholder where you can fill in the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna create a new Angular project, ng new, and I'm gonna call it routing. And um, I can pass in a flag like this. So what this will let Angular CLI do is enable routing because you've passed in the dash dash routing flag. I'm just gonna say uh, routing intro just to avoid confusion, the name of the project is routing intro and the flag here, dash dash routing, is what tells Angular CLI to enable routing, to set some basic code and configuration in there to enable routing. So I'm gonna hit enter, and now the Angular CLI is going to create that project for me. And once it's done, we will have it open in Visual Studio Code. Okay, now I have the routing intro project open here and uh, it looks very similar to the Angular CLI project that we've been seeing so far, except for a few minor changes. So I'm gonna start with package.json. The change that you'll notice here is that we now have a dependency on Angular router. So this is the sub framework, like I said, it's a portion of the framework that's not included by default, but you can choose to use it. And in this case, since I've asked Angular CLI to include routing, it's included this dependency for me. So this is how things help. When you don't have routing, you don't need this router to be included. And so this doesn't get NPM installed into your project. And this doesn't get included in your build when you do send out an ng build and um, you know deploy something to your, uh, to your server. So this is something that is included right now because we have routing enabled. So this is the first change that you'll see in the project. The second change you'll see in the project is that Angular CLI provides some bare bones configuration, but it just provides uh, a place for you to configure your routing. So if you open your app.module.ts, now we see here there is a new module that it has included. It has included this thing called app routing module, and it has actually created that module here, app-routing.module.ts. See app routing module is imported from app-routing.module. So if you open this, here you see it's created this class called app routing module and it has created some configuration. It has this constant called routes, which is an empty array. And then it has this import of router module dot for root. Okay, this sounds a little bit complex, but let's break this down step by step. So first of all is this array called routes, which is of type routes here. Now, what is this? Routes is basically an array of this route class. So this is a convenience thing that you can actually just replace with this. It's basically just an array, all right? So instead of importing routes, you can just import route and declare an array of routes. What does this array of routes do? This array of routes is what configures your routes. Do you remember in the last video I told you that in order to configure routes, you need to specify a bunch of things. First your URL, what is the route URL, and then map it to a component. Like what is a component that needs to load when that route URL is accessed, right? And you configure that and you pass that to Angular and then Angular does the rest, right? This is what we've learned. We basically need to have a bunch of mappings of URLs to components. Once you've established those bunch of mappings, you pass that mapping, that list of mapping to Angular. So this is exactly what we're doing here. We specify the mapping here by an array of routes, and then you pass that configuration to Angular by calling this router module dot for root of routes. Okay, once you do this, you're basically telling Angular 
to configure those routes. And whenever those routes are accessed in your page, Angular is going to load those components, right? So this array is going to be an array of objects, okay? An array of objects where each object specifies a mapping of a URL to a component. So if you do control space, you can see what are the things that you can choose here. So the first one is the path. The path is what specifies your URL, okay? So this can be view one, and then the component. The component is gonna be whatever component you need to create, all right? So here, you're gonna be doing a bunch of these. You're gonna be having a bunch of these attributes, these uh, objects rather. So view two is gonna go to component two, view three is gonna go to component three, so you specify this, and then this uh, code is already place, already in place by the Angular CLI. is gonna pass that configuration that you've specified here to Angular, and that's it. Routing is done, everything is gonna work fine. So let's test this out. We're gonna create a simple app. Uh, it's not gonna have a whole lot of, uh, you know, routing functionalities. Just let's just say we have uh, two URLs. We have home and we have settings, right? So we wanna be able to access the app, slash home, should show the home component, uh, a home view and slash settings to show the setting component, which shows the setting view. 